It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is in-home care assistance. Joining me is Jennifer Helen of Seniors Helping Seniors and Jackie Esterline with Eleven Home Care. Right? Correct. Right? Absolutely. It's good to have you both here. Thank, Thank you. you. After we finally got everything started. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we have some things we want to talk about, but before the show, you both brought up some things that I'm probably going to take the show in a little bit different direction today because I think it's extremely important. What really happens with in-home care assistance is something that the general viewing audience never sees, about, never sees or never hears about. So I think that I, after you both state your qualifications and what you do, I think I'd like to take it into some situations and especially from uh, what you talked about with me about about uh, abuse and with some of the statistics from Laura Moody from from the state attorney general's office, I think it's only it's important because I get those calls too, and I I know I was reluctant to to make phone calls. I'm not reluctant anymore. If I see somebody doing abuse, I make a phone call, and it's a good thing to do. But first, Jackie, what did you do? What is your company? What do you have? Mm -hmm. Eleven Home Care actually provides private duty care for seniors in their home. Sometimes it assisted livings and facilities, but primarily our goal is to keep people in their home longer. And so our part of the the, the puzzle is that when the when folks are having trouble bathing and dressing, um, reminders for medications, they need um, that more hands-on type of care. That's what we do. We go in there, we can physically, you know, help people transfer because sometimes as you age and things happen, um, it becomes almost dangerous to be, you know, left alone and not have somebody support you and guide you, um, you know, during the day, whether it is getting dressed, um, going from bed to a wheelchair or getting up on your walker. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna try to keep people in their home longer so that they can have the support they need and a more hands-on close um, close contact. And the longer you can do that, the less money a family has to put out in more expensive care. Oh, absolutely. And this is why I always talk about elements of care. I, just, I like to think about how long can we keep people at home and what can we do to keep them at home? We can use daycare, we can use in-home care assistance, we can use Jennifer, mm -hmm. we can escalate to your level, then we can maybe have to bring skilled nursing care in, especially if you're under Medicare. There are a lot of things that families can do that they simply don't understand. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and real quick, the, the other thing too, um, people need to understand, you know, there's a place for every one of us in the business. And for some people staying at home is the appropriate thing. I've worked in buildings and you know what? being in an assisted living or a care facility, for some people that is the right thing. They, you know, but you've got to figure out what is the right thing for each person. Right, right. Jennifer, Jennifer explain to our, our viewing audience what you do and your company is. All right, I'm one of the owners of Seniors Helping Seniors, and we do something uh, similar to Jackie, but we're the first rung in the introduction into care. Um, we don't do the hands-on. Um, but what we do is uh, the things that a senior might need to help them stay in their home, transportation to and from doctor's appointments, the grocery store, um, meals, uh, med reminders, um, will, light housekeeping, all of those surrounding services. Um, when someone says, oh, I don't need help, but uh, maybe the house isn't as clean as it used to be, or maybe they've lost their license for one reason or another, macular degeneration, glaucoma, we can help them stay in the house and, and be as independent as possible. And we only hire seniors to do that. So it's a little bit more comfortable. You know, when people are first introduced to care and, and needing a little help, it's 
someone a little closer in age that's compassionate and understanding. I think you should repeat that. I think maybe the viewers didn't pick up on the fact that you only help you only hire seniors to help seniors. Right. There's mm -hmm. a difference. Yes, there really is. The difference um, in care, especially with those folks who are just coming into needing help and they've been independent their whole lives, they've done it for 90 years, and now all of a sudden they need help driving or they need help around the house. And it's it's hard, it's a difficult transition. So it's a little bit more comfortable because it's not a 20 year old coming in and telling them what to do. It's it's maybe a 65 or a 70 year old saying, hey, let me help you with that. It makes it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. It's and their you know, friend. Right. Uh, it's over the years and all the television and radio and the articles that are written for newspapers, I've used my own experiences in a lot of these situations. And now I've arrived at a point in my life, I'm 82 years old, and I, I am as experiencing more of these problems that we talk about on these TV shows, the more we talk about on radio, and the more of the things I write about. Uh, I have put into place for my wife and I a very good long-term health care plan. We have done a good job with our estate planning. Uh, we own our home. We, we've been very fortunate. We've been able, to, with my current military, and then we just, with good investments, we've been able to take care of ourselves. But that doesn't mean that we couldn't have a problem where Terry might need more help in caring for me, or Mike might need help in caring for her. And I know now that I'm not as strong as I used to be. My balance is not as good. Um, I've gone to physical therapy. I, I do all the things that we tell people to do. Sometimes they just don't work as well as we want them to do. So then we have to do something to put things in place to make sure that we can help each other in Oma, husband and wife. And the reason I'm setting the stage for this this way is because, Jackie, you had a comment about... Uh, well, first of all, you you bought with the with the uh, safety statistics and abuse statistics that you got from Laura because both of you deal with that. So Jennifer, let's pick it up with your triad work and uh, what triad does, and both of you are involved with triad, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So how about both of you explaining to our our viewing audience what triad is, what it does, and how it tries to work with the other agencies? Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to take it? Or you want you me to? go for it. You start. Okay. <laughs> well, triad is. Um, actually a national organization, but it was brought to the county uh, many years ago. Um, so Brevard County Triad is made up of the uh, state attorney's office, the sheriff's office, and the local police departments. And they have partnered with, over the years, uh, people in the community, seniors, and senior-related businesses, mm -hmm. other businesses who care about the seniors in our community. And the goal is to um, educate promote safety, um, promote intergenerational um, activities for our seniors in the county, listen to what their needs are, and try to provide for those needs. Um, so we, we have different activities throughout the year. Um, they do Senior Santa, where they provide gifts for seniors in uh, skilled nursing facilities that would not get anything. They're, they would not have a gift at Christmas time, and Jackie really heads that up, and she's done a fabulous job the last couple of years uh, collecting a lot of presents. It's a lot of work, but it's, it's up fantastic. Let we'll Jackie talk about that. Uh, well, Senior Santa, is, it's, really, it's really close to my heart because what we do is we reach out to all of the skilled facilities that have seniors that are um, that they've unfortunately made a skilled facility their permanent home. Um, and what happens in a lot of those cases, they once you go to a skilled facility at your permanent home, you, you, you don't have the friend base that you had before. Um, a lot of folks don't have the family. Um, there's usually financial issues. So we go out, we, we reach out to the, the facilities, we find out who those people are and what they'd like to have for Christmas because this is the time of year for them that um, they get they get shampoo, a special shampoo. Not that the skilled facilities don't provide soap and shampoo, but you know they might want a certain brand or something special other than that generic brand. So you know, um, and I always kind of chuckle because the men always, you know, you get this list and the men want Old Spice. And if you've ever walked into a facility that 50 men have gotten Old Spice, it's quite an experience in itself. <laughs> um, but you know, so some people want a sweater, and that's the only sweater they're going to get all year, or they want a blanket. 
um, you know, games. It, it's just we, what we try to do is give them that little special gift um, at, at the holidays that they wouldn't normally have. And then they know they're not forgotten. Um, so many people, they get there and they really feel that um, that they're forgotten. And um, so we try to open that up for them. The other thing that we do um, with Triad, our, our big project is Project Lifesaver. And that is the banding. And I, th I don't know if you've ever had anybody to talk about Project Lifesaver, but I, oh. it might be a really good segment. Because Project Lifesaver is a banding project where we will put a device on a person. Um, it could be a senior with Alzheimer's. It could be someone with um, a younger person with Down syndrome. It could be someone that's autistic, but it's that person that's going to be at risk for getting lost. Um, you know, they don't mean to get lost. Um, they, they just, you know, they're at a point where their memory, um, their brain is not always telling them the right things. So what we do, we ban them. Uh, we get a phone call when they're missing. They send a helicopter up. They send the police out. And within 15 or 20 minutes, we've, we've located that person. Um, you know, and I go back to the example where the gentleman, I think it's going on three, four years in West Melbourne okay. that... Um, unfortunately, he had been out one time before, got lost. They found him, took him home. The family said, ah, he'll never do it again. Um, he did it again. And they weren't so lucky. And um, still, they're looking for him. Um, they never had him banded. Um, there's no reason not to ban someone that you have a concern for, especially now. We have worked right. so very hard um, raising money, um, getting grants that um, if somebody needs the band, uh, they can't afford the band, it doesn't matter. We're going to figure out, they're going to get the band. They're going to be protected right. and they're going to be safe because that's you're, the- You're kind of right. alluding to the old Wanderers program from the Alzheimer's Association. You mm -hmm. don't know anything about that? I've heard about that. That's okay. the forerunner of all this. They mm -hmm. uh, put a uh, band, war band, a wristband or something like that. And if somebody saw somebody wandering around with that band on, mm -hmm they uh, called a national number. Uh, we located a person down in uh, West Palm Beach mm -hmm. within two hours through that system. This was this was 25 years ago. Yeah. But what you all don't know, and you all are very, very connected with Triad, but Triad had some very humble beginnings, mm -hmm. very humble. Mm -hmm. And I was involved when he first started. And uh, we started with the first helicopter thing where you put the helicopter up. It wasn't very effective then. Mm -hmm. And then the Sheriff's Department realized they didn't really know a whole lot about how to take care of a dementia patient once mm -hmm. they found them. Mm -hmm. We helped them write their first manual. Wow. 20 some years ago. Yeah. And, and yeah, you know, the other great part of the program is that it gets eyes in the home because we still have to go in and do battery changes. The Sheriff's Department does battery changes um, on a relatively frequent basis, um, but it gets eyes into the home too, to, you know, be a support and offer, you know, information on, you know, resources, resources that are out there because so many people just don't know. And, and that's what's so great about helping seniors of Rivard because we are trying to let people know what is out there and available yeah. to them. I see. Right. What we're doing is setting the stage for what I really, really want the two of you to tell our viewing audience. We have helicopters, we have triad, we have helping seniors, we have aging matters, we have 211, we have all kinds of resources to help people. But if a people don't know about the resources, they're dormant. Mm -hmm. They don't do any good for anybody. You can have all these wonderful things. But having said all these wonderful things and all the stuff we have, the two of you and your in-home care programs, you find cases where families still have not availed themselves of all this stuff that we talk about. But the important thing is they don't know how to piece things together to be like a building block program and care. And if you're going to start right off with the A brand at the $90,000 a year cost level, most people can't afford that. Most people can afford the two or three thousand dollar a year mm -hmm. care. So I'd like for you to you you both you picked up on some statistics for elder abuse. I'd like you to tie that in with what the Baker Act case that you talked about before the show, Jackie. You understand what I want? 
Okay. You first, Jackie, or okay. Jennifer. All right. Um, well, first of all, I would like people to not be so hesitant to accept care into the home because since we're the, the first rung, we're a lot of times in the home initially and and people are saying well i don't need any help i don't i don't want help and it is a difficult transition but we would much rather come in um and maybe you know it's it's only a couple of hours a week it's, so it's not um you know it's not burdensome um, but it kind of gets people used to care and we would rather do the vacuuming um the the sweeping uh so that people aren't falling you know, so it's, I think it's important for people to realize that having that help is okay. Um, and also when they're going out to look for help, that they are getting a company like Jackie's, like ours, that are licensed, they're insured. You know, they do the background checks so that they're keeping their families safe. Um, way too often we run into situations where it could be a family member and, and statistically often it is, but it could be uh, a caregiver, you know, someone who they, the family has hired, it's a friend or a neighbor, um, even somebody through church who they've hired to come into the home under the table to work and nobody's really there with eyes on checking back to see how things are going. Right. Um, and they, they end up um, with abuse or fraud, theft, um, I was in one house in Melbourne where they stole all the woman's statues. They stole her paintings. They stole lamps. The family was from out of town. They didn't realize until it was too late and all these things were gone. And there were several people in and out of the home. So they really weren't sure who stole these things. And it was never reported. And that's one of the scary things is that they say one in five um seniors will experience some form of abuse and theft. One in five. And we have it's a lot of seniors home. here in Brevard County. I mean, that's astounding. See, most people and don't only one that. in 44 right. is reported. So um, all of those other 43 are out there doing it again to someone else. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, it's a real big problem. See, as you get older, we don't want to admit that we can't drive that we can't vacuum. I hate to vacuum, but I, I know, <laughs> I know, I know about it hurts me to do it. I know that if I misstep when I'm walk pushing the vacuum, if I don't have my cane or my rollator, if I misstep, I could fall. I fell the other day and I'm very careful to watch myself, but I put myself in a, a precarious position where I did I, I, I sort of rolled over. I, went, I didn't fall. But it, 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 it reminded me that I have to be more careful. And But if, if I'm aware of all this stuff and still make a mistake myself, mm -hmm. think about all the people out there that need to use a cane and need to use a rollator. And I see these people, people my age, with these things that they put in front and catch up and then take mm -hmm. a step and move these things. Or then I see them with a three-wheel tricycle. Mm -hmm. Those are dangerous. If if you if you if you got a three-wheel tricycle and you push too far this way, you fall over. If you got a four-wheel, no matter which way you go, mm -hmm. you distribute the the load. Mm -hmm. So every time I see somebody with a three-wheeler, and I probably am stepping on businesses' toes, but I don't mind because some things simply are not safe. And we need to do a better job of preaching safety. Jackie, picking up on what Jennifer was saying, how, what did you do in addition to what Jackie or Jennifer does to keep people safe in their homes? Well, the other thing we're going to do is, you know, Medicare will pay for um, services and agency to go out and and do exercises with people to. Um, train them in, in different things, but it's, it's just basically training and reinforcement and that what their hopes are that that person is going to, once the Medicare agency walks out the door with their physical therapy, that the person is still going to do those exercises. Now, I think, and I just go back on my, my own parents and my own situation, that usually when that physical therapy person walked out the door and they were only there three times a week for a couple minutes and said, let's do the arm lifts or whatever it is that we're going to do, when they, when they left, that was the last time. They, they would only do it when that person was there. We're going to go in and we're going to say, so what is it that you have? What are those exercises that you need to do? 
You know, what is it that we can help you with to keep you doing those exercises that are going to keep your balance a little bit better? Because if you don't do anything, everything is going to decline. If you if you just sit in a chair and watch TV or, um, you know, snooze all day, different things are going to deteriorate and they're just not going to be where you need to be. All night long. Well, that too. And again, and there's another problem because if you stay awake all night long and you're trying to sleep, then you're disoriented and um, lots of bad things can happen. But by opening the door and letting someone come in and be there to do the exercises with you, encourage the exercises, um, it, it makes a world of difference. Um, it makes a huge, it keeps people safe. And One of the other things Jackie does, we just had a client that we, you know, we went in and we realized she's a lovely lady, but we can't, we can't help her. She's, she needs more assistance. So I called Jackie and said, Jackie, I really think this is more for you um, because we can't do that hands-on care and we couldn't put her in the shower and she really needed help and that's where a lot of falls happen mm -hmm. are in the bathroom yes. so safety you know jackie's company came in so that they could help her in the shower and that's mm -hmm. you know helping prevent a uti and there's a whole you know it's not just one thing typically it can be so many so yeah, see that's the other part of the, of the care business um, the element of honesty is often competes with the, with safety. Um, companies are in business to make money, mm -hmm. and most companies are going to try and hold on to a client as long as they possibly can. It's been my experience with the people that we have as sponsors for helping seniors, and the people I've been associated with over the years. I've been in the care business. That people I've been associated with. Uh, while they all want to strive and make their businesses the best they can, I've been come across a lot of people that are willing to say, I can't do this. You need to, this is what you two have just described. And that's so important in the mm -hmm. care business. There's one other element of care that we have five minutes left in the program. But I want both of you to talk about the need for families to be involved because uh, it's not as easy to place a man in advanced care as it is a woman for a number of reasons because of strength factors, dementia, it becomes more complicated. Uh, Jack, you, 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 please pick up on that just for a minute because you had a situation and- I have less than five minutes, Joe. I don't know that I can do that, yeah, but anyway, get, get <laughs> this is a tough now. one. <laughs> I told you I talk fast. Um, what, you know, the, the, the problem is again, people wait too long. They, they wait way too long to open the door to someone coming in to help out. Because Jennifer talked a little bit about mentioned UTIs, um, you know, when, as we get older, um, UTI to 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 me is I feel uncomfortable. I may be running a fever, and I take a medication. It's done. It's over, and things are wonderful. And an older person that is not staying hydrated, is not um, taking their medication the way they should be, um, you know, is going out and sweating, and again. There's a whole host of reasons that can cause a person to have a, a, a UTI. What people don't understand is that UTI in an older person is going to, a lot of times, cause behaviors. And when I say behaviors, and unfortunately, Joe, I'm sorry, I'm not picking on men, sort of. But men are a different build than women. Men have testosterone. Men have, in, in the older age groups, have been in the military and they fought. And um, so, so what happens sometimes is they get a UTI and again, it's not the uncomfortable feeling, it's not the temperature, it's a, it's a change in behavior. And that change in behavior um, can cause um, someone to pick up the phone not knowing that it's a UTI and calling the police and saying, my husband, my spouse, my friend, it's just crazy. You need to get out here and you need to do something. And the police, um, with good intentions, and they don't understand a lot of times um, what can happen with a UTI and an infection, they take them to circles of care at, because the person is then Baker acted, which again, you know, it's the worst thing. Circles is a great place. I, and I, I say that meaning it's a great place for folks with um, issues related to what they are to do at circles of care, the psychiatric, yes. right. If you need to be there. So nothing wrong with circles in that, that realm, but when a senior is involved, it's not really the right place. They're not set up to do the UTIs right away. They're not set, you know, to do a urine specimen right away. They're not there to pick up on that. They're, they're there to pick up on the psychiatric needs. So um, someone goes to circles, 
So on their record, um, they're going to have that they were Baker acted. Well, Baker acted means you were sent there because you had behaviors. We were acting um, not so much just kind of out of sorts, but you've had behaviors that are bad. You've 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 had maybe some violence associated with that, which for the for the most part, facilities. They don't want someone in their buildings, and I mean, and, you, and think about it. If you have a loved one, you're going to put in a facility. Do you want somebody? Do you want your loved one in a facility where people have been Baker acted for behaviors? I mean, you're you're thinking about so a risk. because you're going to take too long to finish explaining it. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you. There. And what you're driving at is the fact that the men are more difficult to place because of the strength, and there's fewer places that will take those men. Once the risk. Back. If they've well, had they're that. a risk factor. Mm -hmm. So, Happen. and again, involves the use of both of your elements of care so that the families understand and you can explain to the families what you see happening mm -hmm. because the families don't understand it. Mm -mm. What else would you add, Jennifer, to what Jack? We've got a minute and four seconds. <laughs> just to what we were just talking about, hiring a professional company who has someone who has that knowledge and can tell them you know, here are your options, or here's what I see could happen, good and bad. Having that expertise is invaluable. Yeah. So hiring somebody who, again, is professional, is licensed, insured, bonded. Understands what is happening and mm -hmm. understands the risk factor. Mm -hmm. Jackie? Right. Uh, no, that's what, uh, you know, it's, it's all about keeping pe people safe and finding the appropriate care. And as we talked about, unfortunately, before I came in here, the situation where the gentleman was going to get Baker acted, and it just, you know, it, it kills me when that happens because I know I it just does. But, you know, I had the light side of the show is that now I know you run a vacuum cleaner. I might call you. I have some vacuuming no, no, that needs no, 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 no. <laughs> I'll tell you what we will do. The next taping session, we're going to do the show we didn't do today. Okay? okay? Because that's the beauty about what we do. We can do what needs to be done. So with that, I want to thank you both. And I want to thank you, viewer, for watching today's episode of Helping Seniors. And I hope you've learned something about in-home care assistance and the importance of understanding what it is. Thank you both. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses, and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.